Welcome to Advantage Plus Automated Endoscope Reprocessor Overview Training. This video program supplements, but does not replace the information provided in the user manual that came with your Advantage Plus Automated Endoscope Reprocessor. This video is divided into segments, so you can easily review specific topics as needed. These segments include an introduction to the Advantage Plus Automated Endoscope Reprocessor and how it ties to infection prevention and guidelines. Key components, daily startup tasks and the components involved, steps for preparing an endoscope, proper placement and attachment of an endoscope, standard operation and testing the minimum recommended concentration, steps for loading detergent, disinfectant, and alcohol, documentation for test strip quality control, maintenance procedures, steps for properly powering down the PC or reprocessor, troubleshooting, and who to call for assistance with your Advantage Plus reprocessor. The Advantage Plus reprocessor is a state-of-the-art market leader in reprocessing. Your new AER will provide excellence in patient safety and societal guideline compliance for years to come. As part of Cantel's commitment to infection prevention, the Advantage Plus reprocessor is designed to ensure patient safety by adhering to the strictest of standards for high-level disinfection optimize workflow efficiency, and deliver versatility by supporting a wide range of endoscopes. This machine is designed and engineered to meet society guidelines and recommendations, providing infection prevention for your patients, caregivers, and other healthcare providers. Additional details for specific guidelines are available online at endoinfectionprevention.com. The Advantage Plus reprocessor was designed to meet customer needs with several major benefits, including operator safety, infection prevention, data management for tracking cycle progress, the use of Rapicide PA disinfectant, an environmentally and user-friendly high-level disinfectant, along with intercept detergent that has proven to show superior removal of biofilm and organic soils. Cantel is committed to the highest quality of patient care. After the endoscope is cleaned in accordance with the instructions for use, IFU, this reprocessor helps to ensure operator and patient safety. The Advantage Plus reprocessor was designed for ease of use and maintenance in the disinfection of endoscopes. The Advantage Plus reprocessor is a dual endoscope disinfector, where two endoscopes can be reprocessed simultaneously or asynchronously. Each side operates independently with its own basin, lid, basin control buttons, foot switch, and sample port. Let's take a closer look at the features and components. Two large independent basins minimize endoscope coiling. These independent basins allow you to process endoscopes using the same or different disinfection programs. For endoscopes with two or fewer connection points, two endoscopes can be reprocessed in the same basin simultaneously. The following components are inside each basin. The fluid inlet dispenses water and Rapicide PA disinfectant part A and part B. The spray head disperses a fine jet of fluid throughout the basin to ensure full endoscope coverage. The spray arm, located on the basin lid, provides fluid spray for disinfection and rinsing of the exterior surfaces of the endoscope. The use of the spray arm reduces the amount of fluids needed during the reprocessing cycle. The connection manifold attaches the endoscope hookup block to the system. Waste fluids are discarded through the drain. The overflow outlet drains excess fluids. Hands-free operation of the transparent glass lids provides ease of use and decreases the risk of cross-contamination. Hookup blocks dedicated to a family of endoscopes ensure correct connectivity and flow rates to meet the manufacturer's specifications. Endoscope hookup blocks must be purchased with your Advantage Plus reprocessor. Once you scan the endoscope, the screen indicates the hookup block needed and cross-checks to ensure you are using the correct hookup block for the endoscope. To determine hookup blocks needed for new endoscopes, refer to the hookup guide on the metavators.com website. Matching the endoscope to the correct hookup block is critical for proper reprocessing of the endoscope. The system monitors individual channel connectivity and channel blockage along with continuous leakage detection. The connection manifold attaches the endoscope hookup blocks to the monitoring system. It also dispenses fluids and air through the channels of the endoscope. The control panel allows the operator to select settings, operate the reprocessor, view system messages, errors, warnings, and cycle information. It consists of the basin control buttons, function keys, selection buttons, and a touchpad and mouse buttons. Let's review the basin control buttons. 
Each basin is controlled by its own keypad grouping called the basin control buttons. These buttons include the open-close button to open and close the lid, the start button to start a disinfection program, the cancel button to stop a disinfection program, and the menu button to log in, select programs, and enter data. The monitor displays in a split-screen format for easy viewing of each basin cycle information. The left side of the screen displays the cycle information being performed in the left basin. A keyboard and mouse are also supplied with the Advantage Plus reprocessor and can be connected for use when entering user information. The personal computer or PC that manages the reprocessing cycles and data storage completed in each module is in the back of the Advantage Plus reprocessor and is separate from the monitor. When the PC is on, a round blue light will be illuminated, which is located directly under the monitor. The dedicated PC provides system operation of the reprocessing cycle, cycle recording, networking availability, and remote diagnostics. The computer has mirrored hard drives that provide protection against a single hard drive failure. Regular backups of the database to a remote location is highly recommended for data protection against database corruption or complete system failure. Contact Metavator's technical support promptly at 1-800-444-4729 to discuss the instructions for database backup. The barcode scanner allows for fast and accurate transfer of information. Separate foot switches allow hands-free opening and closing of the basin lid on either side. The access door opens to allow access to the internal components. Let's look at the internal components. The basin sample port dispenses high-level disinfectant for minimum recommended concentration, or MRC testing, with a test strip at the end of each cycle. Rapid and easy-to-use Rapicide PA test strips are used to measure the MRC of Rapicide PA disinfectant with definitive pass-fail color chart. Using single-use Rapicide PA disinfectant means each reprocessing cycle uses fresh disinfectant solution. The Advantage Plus reprocessor features an 800 milliliter detergent reservoir. A detergent uptake is also available and can be easily installed by a field service engineer, or FSE, to provide direct attachment to the one gallon intercept detergent container. This minimizes the handling of the detergent by reducing the frequency of detergent changes and eliminating the need for refilling the detergent container. An easy to fill alcohol reservoir provides an automated alcohol purge to assist with reducing residual moisture in the endoscope channels, therefore preventing potential bacterial colonization. Two gauges measure air pressure in the Advantage Plus reprocessor. Air pressure gauges are preset. Please do not adjust the settings. Contact Metavator's technical support at 1-800-444-4729 for assistance. Now, let's examine some of the external features. The Advantage Plus reprocessor utilizes an external dual water pre-filtration system plus 0.1 micron bacteria retentive filter to provide high quality rinse water. The pre-filtration system removes particles from the incoming water line in step-down fashion from 1.0 to 0.4 down to 0.1 microns. External mounting allows for easy access. These filters should be changed every six months or when the pressure indicated in the gauges falls below 35. Or, there is 5 PSI or more difference in pressure between the gauges excluding the last gauge. The Advantage Plus reprocessor must be connected to an air supply for proper operation. A small external air compressor can be purchased which delivers proper air flows and pressure for correct system operation. If your reprocessor did not include the external air compressor, the system may utilize house compressed air, the house air supplied must be dry, oil-free, and meet the required air pressure, minimum flow volume, and maximum particle size specifications. At the start of the day, check to ensure the Advantage Plus reprocessor system monitor, PC, and main power source are on. The Advantage Plus reprocessor should always remain on and the system should not be used if left dormant for more than seven days. Contact Metavator's technical support at one 800 444 4729 for further direction on proper shutdown and restart if you anticipate your system being dormant. Make sure the water shutoff valve for the incoming water line is in the open position. The unit will not operate without water pressure. Inspect the gauges regularly for noticeable water pressure drops and replace the appropriate filters as necessary to maintain 35 PSI. Water quality can vary geographically, seasonally, and intermittently depending on a variety of factors that will affect filter life. 
Saturation of the filters with sediment reduces the incoming water pressure below the minimum 35 psi requirement during the flush or rinse cycle. When this occurs, the difference in pressure between the gauges will indicate which filter must be changed. Refer to the six-month maintenance segment for a demonstration of changing the filters. Inspect the hookup block and O-rings before use for signs of wear, kinks in the tubing, missing or damaged components, restrictions or blockages, and hardened or brittle tubes. These are signs that your hookups or their parts need to be replaced. Any modification or alteration of a hookup design will impair the functionality of the hookup to an extent that patient safety may be compromised. Keeping your hookup blocks organized and hanging when not in use promotes drying and eases identification. Cantel offers a hookup rack specifically for your Advantage Plus reprocessor hookups. We are now going to open the center access door to inspect and learn about the fluid used. Intercept detergent is the only approved detergent for use in the Advantage Plus reprocessor. Its unique surfactant-based formulation is clinically proven to provide superior removal of biological and organic soils, including biofilm that may be found on flexible endoscopes. The concentrated solution has a fast contact time of one minute and low use concentration to save your facility time and money. Intercept detergent's low foaming and neutral pH characteristics meet the criteria for all endoscope manufacturers and society guidelines for effective manual and mechanical cleaning. Intercept detergent is an environmentally responsible and biodegradable chemistry. The Advantage Plus reprocessor uses Rapicide PA disinfectant that comes in two parts, A and B. Rapicide PA disinfectant is a single-use peracetic acid-based solution with proven materials compatibility. High-level disinfection is achieved with an exposure time of only five minutes at a minimum of 30 degrees Celsius when the concentration is equal to or greater than 850 parts per million or PPM. Rapicide PA disinfectant has sporicidal, bactericidal, fungicidal, tuberculocidal, and virucidal efficacy. Therefore, it effectively kills TB, hepatitis viruses, poliovirus, Clostridium difficile, VRE, MRSA, CRE, and more. It's an environmentally responsible chemistry that eventually breaks down into water and vinegar once it mixes with wastewater. To be compliant with federal standards and for staff safety, obtain a Rapicide PA disinfectant spill kit from Medivators. During the in-service, you will receive training on spill containment, neutralization of Part A, along with safe cleanup and disposal of Parts A and B. The Rapicide PA disinfectant spill cleanup and disposal form will be in the in-service packet, shipped with your AER or found online at www.metivators.com. The Advantage Plus reprocessor utilizes 70% isopropyl alcohol per most endoscope manufacturers' IFUs and society guidelines. For the alcohol purge phase to be completed, sufficient alcohol is needed in the reservoir. Open the center access door to check the level in the reservoir. If low, fill the reservoir with 70% isopropyl to the fill line indicated on the reservoir, which is 800 milliliters. Prior to handling the endoscope, personnel must don the facility required personal protective equipment to prevent contact with infectious material. At a minimum, PPE may include gloves, impervious gown, masks to cover the nose and mouth, and protective eyewear. Before placing the endoscope in the Advantage Plus reprocessor, the endoscope must be properly prepared. First, complete the point of use treatment. Then, using an appropriate covered container such as the Cleanoscope Advantage Transport and Short-Term Storage System, transport the endoscope to the reprocessing room. In the reprocessing room, confirm that the water-resistant cap is attached, if applicable, and valves have been removed. Next, Perform the manual leak test. This may be performed either as a dry leak test with the Veriscan leak tester or a wet leak test in the sink. Although the Advantage Plus reprocessor has a leak test feature, it does not replace the manual leak test that is required by the endoscope manufacturer's IFU. The manual leak test allows for the physical turning of the control knobs to flex the bending rubber and pressing the camera switches to test these additional areas for leaks. 
Per society guidelines and IFU requirements, manually clean the endoscope in a detergent solution, meeting the required contact time and temperature of the detergent before disinfection in the Advantage Plus reprocessor. Refer to the endoscope's reprocessing manual for complete instructions. Accessories, such as reusable valves, should also be manually cleaned per the endoscope manufacturer's IFU. Visually inspect the endoscope with lighted magnification for any wear or defects. External and internal surfaces may be checked for residual organic soils. Surveillance of internal lumens should be performed by boroscope inspection on a schedule determined by a facility. The Advantage Plus reprocessor has been cleared by the FDA with a cleaning phase indicated to replace manual cleaning of endoscopes. When considering use of the automated cleaning cycle, endoscopes must undergo point-of-use treatment immediately following the procedure, be leak tested in accordance with industry standards, and be placed directly into the Advantage Plus reprocessor within one hour of use. The FDA cleared automated cleaning cycle is only validated for use with intercept detergent followed by the Rapicide PA disinfectant cycle. To perform best practice, Cantel recommends all endoscopes utilize the automated cleaning cycle as supplemental cleaning to thorough manual cleaning. Ensure the basin lid is open. If not, step on the foot switch to open the basin lid. Pre-coil the endoscope before placing it inside the basin. Hold the endoscope supporting the control and light guide tube sections. Carefully place the endoscope in the basin and ensure that the control head is in the deepest part of the basin. If using a cassette from the EndoDry storage and drying system, carefully place the endoscope in the cassette and ensure that the control head is in the front or deepest part of the cassette and basin. Endoscope hookup blocks must be purchased along with your Advantage Plus reprocessor. Only Metavator's validated endoscope hookup blocks can be used. Metavator's hookup blocks are validated for proper endoscope connection and fluid flow, which is critical to ensuring the endoscope and its interior channels are high-level disinfected and rinsed. Hookup blocks cannot be modified or altered. Use of altered hookup blocks is strictly prohibited and will not ensure high-level disinfection of endoscopes or patient safety and should never be used. Hookup blocks are labeled with a lot number, part number, barcode, and individual channels. The hookup blocks may also include a channel separator to cover the valve openings. Every endoscope channel should be connected to the appropriate hookup block attachment. This allows for channel monitoring, blockage detection, and leak detection. Also, every hookup connector should be attached to the endoscope. Your Cantel clinical specialist will review these hookup blocks and their connections during your hands-on training. If you have any questions regarding hookup blocks for your endoscope model or the hookup guide, contact Metavator's technical support at 1-800-444-4729. To load an endoscope, start by selecting the proper hookup block for the endoscope. Hold the hookup block with the handle positioned to the right with the leak test tubing assembly that has a blue tube or blue washer to the left. Place the hookup block lightly over the manifold making sure none of the tubing runs under or is pinched under the block. Lock the connector block in place by moving the handle to the left. Hookup connector tubing should be positioned so that they do not raise to form a large loop and become caught in the spray arm, do not wrap around the spray head, and do not cover barcodes on the endoscope and hookup block. Let's walk through this process using an Olympus endoscope. Your facility may use another endoscope manufacturer. A Cantel clinical specialist will provide hands-on training for your facility's specific endoscopes. For this Olympus endoscope, as you look at the hookup block, the connectors are numbered 1 through 8. Number 1 is the leak test connector. It connects to the leak test port on the endoscope. Place the connector cap over the endoscope's venting connector, aligning the pin on the connector with the slot on the connector cap. Depress and rotate clockwise to engage. Number two connects to number six on the hookup block. This is the air-water connector. Align the connector openings with the air-water ports on the endoscope. Ensure the top silver latch is depressed in. Holding the beige connector, push onto the ports until the latch moves out and clicks. To remove, depress the latch and pull off. Number three is the biopsy inlet connector 
which connects to the biopsy inlet on the endoscope. Align the biopsy inlet connector over the biopsy inlet port and push down to compress the spring and slide the frame forward to fully engage. For the second part of this connection, attach the air water and suction port separator by aligning the separator with the piston ports. Ensure that the release button is pushed in. Push the connector onto the piston ports until the release button moves out and clicks. Number four is the air pipe connector that attaches to the endoscope's air pipe. Align the opening in the connector with the endoscope's air pipe. Push the connector onto the air probe until fully engaged. Number five is the elevator wire channel or auxiliary water connector. Align the connector with the endoscope fitting and twist clockwise until fully engaged. As we continue around the block, number six is connected to number two. Number seven is the suction connector. Align the silicone tubing with the suction barb and push the tubing onto the barb until fully engaged. Number eight is an extra port if needed for a specialty endoscope. It is not needed for this example. Always refer to the provided hookup connection guide. Let's walk through this process again using a Pentax endoscope. Your facility may use another endoscope manufacturer. A Cantel clinical specialist will provide hands-on training for your facility-specific endoscopes. For this Pentax endoscope, as you look at the hookup block, the connectors are numbered 1 through 8. Number 1 is the leak test connector. It connects to the leak test port on the endoscope. Place the connector cap over the endoscope's venting connector, aligning the pin on the connector with the slot on the connector cap. Depress and rotate clockwise to engage. Number two is the forward water jet connector. Align this connector with the endoscope's forward water jet port. Insert and twist clockwise until fully engaged. Number three connects the endoscope's biopsy inlet port and the air water suction ports. Align the stainless steel lure fitting with the biopsy inlet port and turn clockwise until fully engaged. For the second part of this connection, Attach the air water and suction port separator. Align the separator with piston ports and push down to compress the springs completely before sliding the frame forward to fully engage. Number four and six are the air water connector. Align the air water fitting with the endoscope port and insert. Twist collar clockwise until fully engaged. Number five is not used. As we continue around the block, Number six is connected to number four. Number seven is the suction connector. Align the silicone tubing with suction barb and push the tubing onto the barb until fully engaged. Number eight is not used. Always refer to the provided hookup connection guide. Finally, let's walk through this process using a 700 series Fujifilm endoscope. Your facility may use another endoscope manufacturer. A Cantel clinical specialist will provide hands-on training for your facility-specific endoscopes. For this Fujifilm endoscope, as you look at the hookup block, the channels are numbered 1 through 8. Number 1 is the leak test connector. It connects to the leak test port on the endoscope. Align the pins on the connector with the slots on the endoscope fitting. Push on and turn clockwise to engage. Number 2 is connected to number 6 on the hookup block. This is the air-water connector. Align the slots on the connector with the pins on the port of the endoscope. Push and turn clockwise to engage. Number three is the biopsy inlet connector that connects to the biopsy inlet port on the endoscope. Align the biopsy inlet connector over the biopsy inlet port and push down to compress the spring and slide the frame forward to fully engage. Next, install the air water and suction port separator. Align the separator with the piston ports. Ensure that the separator is in the unlocked position and put the connector onto the piston ports until fully engaged. Rotate the locking mechanism clockwise to lock in the connector. Number four is the air pipe connector that attaches to the endoscope's air pipe. Align the opening in the connector with the endoscope's air pipe. Push the connector onto the air probe until fully engaged. Number five is the forward water jet connector. Align the stainless steel fitting with the endoscope's forward water jet port. Push and turn clockwise to connect. 
As we continue around the block, remember number 6 is connected to number 2. Number 7 is the suction connector. Align the silicone tubing with the suction barb and push the tubing onto the barb until fully engaged. Number 8 is the extra port if needed for our specialty endoscope. It is not needed for this example. Always refer to the provided hookup connection guide. Wire-guided and bougie dilators may be reprocessed in the Advantage Plus reprocessor using the appropriate dilator hookup. Soak-only items can be reprocessed using the test block as long as they meet these requirements. The soak-only device must be chemically compatible with the disinfectant chemistry that is in use in the reprocessor as per the device IFU. The IFU for the soak-only device states that the device can be disinfected by submersion in a liquid chemical germicide or LCG. The soak-only device must not contain lumens or channels that require separate flushing. The soak-only device has been cleaned prior to the disinfection process. The soak-only device must be able to physically fit into the AER basin and be completely submerged. High-level disinfection is the standard of decontamination accepted by the facility for the devices being reprocessed. No manual manipulation or flushing of valves or buttons is required. If you require use of this option, please notify your CanTel clinical specialist to set up the appropriate parameters for this function. For a full list of instruments compatible with the Advantage Plus reprocessor, please consult the hookup guide found at www.medivators.com or contact Medivators Technical Support at 1-800-444-4729. Place loose parts, such as reusable valves, in the accessory bag. Place the bag in the basin away from the basin drain. Do not reprocess water bottles, tubing, or forceps in the Advantage Plus reprocessor. Before closing the basin lid, inspect the hookup to ensure that all connections are made properly and the tubing does not interfere with the lower spray head next to the basin manifold. All hookup connections must be securely connected to the endoscope. The channel separator must be installed. The connector hoses must not be kinked. Move any connector tubes away from the lower spray head next to the basin manifold so that it can turn freely. In this segment, we will discuss standard operation. Once the endoscope and hookup are properly connected in the basin, the reprocessing cycle may be started. Press the menu button on the basin side you would like to start. For example, if you place the endoscope in the left basin, Press the menu button on the left basin. The operator selection window opens. Use the barcode scanner to scan your operator ID barcode. The main menu opens. Ensure endoscopes is highlighted and press the green check button. If endoscopes is not highlighted, scroll to this program by using the up-down selection keys. Using the barcode scanner, we will follow the prompts on the screen to scan required data. Scan the endoscope's barcode. Scan the hookup block. Once the endoscope and hookup block are scanned as prompted, the software confirms that the proper hookup block has been selected. Depending on the information your facility furnished, you may then be prompted to scan the physician's barcode. Use the barcode scanner or touchpad to select the correct physician and press the green check button to confirm your selection. For patient ID, scan or enter the patient's identification number. Select OK or press the green check button to accept the information. Recording the patient ID is strongly recommended. This information is often requested during an audit for traceability. The lid automatically closes and the disinfection process begins. The program screen opens to allow you to follow the progress of the disinfection process. The first phase is the startup phase. During this phase, the software reads and monitors all system sensors. The leak test is activated and continues throughout the entire reprocessing cycle. The endoscope is pressurized and the pressure is monitored. If the pressure drops, a leak has been detected and the process is halted. Although the Advantage Plus reprocessor has a leak test feature, it does not replace the manual leak test that is required by the endoscope manufacturer's IFU. The manual leak test allows for the physical turning of the control knobs to flex the bending rubber and pressing the camera switches to test these additional areas for leaks. After the leak test, the Advantage Plus reprocessor monitors channel connectivity and blockages. If the system detects a channel disconnection or blockage, 
an error message displays on the program screen and the cycle is halted. There are multiple phases during the reprocessing cycle, including startup, leak test, wash, disinfect, rinse, alcohol purge, and air phases. The progress of the reprocessing cycle displays on the monitor. If reprocessing in the left basin, view the left side of the user screen to find the endoscope number, operator ID, and cycle number for that basin. The basin temperature is in the center screen. Remember that the temperature of the high-level disinfectant needs to be at a minimum of 30 degrees Celsius, and the contact time is 5 minutes for the endoscope to be high-level disinfected. The Advantage Plus reprocessor monitors this temperature range and alarms that the temperature falls below 30 degrees or rises above 40 degrees Celsius. Program messages, including air messages, are indicated in the dialog box noting the time, error code, and description. This dialog box also changes color depending on the error. Please refer to the troubleshooting segment for more information on errors. Finally, the reservoir status section indicates an appropriate level of fluids in each reservoir as a percentage. Important information on the reservoir status is in the loading fluid segment. Confirm the endoscope status at the completion of a cycle. Status description include Disinfected. The endoscope was run through a complete disinfection cycle. Not disinfected. The endoscope was not disinfected due to a disinfection cycle error or cycle cancellation. Disinfected but not patient safe. The endoscope was disinfected but failed the leak test. The endoscope cannot be used on a patient and should be sent out for repair. When the disinfection process is complete, the program screen prompts you to take a sample of the high-level disinfectant to test the MRC. The monitor displays collect disinfectant sample and check MRC with test strip. After donning facility-required PPE, open the center access door and locate the sample port. Use a sample cup to push straight up on the dispensing tube. Do not push or pull the tube to the right, left, front, or back, as this could cause the tube to snap off. Fluid dispenses into the cup. Place the cup on a flat surface. Dip the indicator pad of the Rapicide PA test strip into the disinfectant for one second and remove. Wait 30 seconds for a reading. Follow the IFU for the Rapicide PA test strip to determine if the MRC test has passed or failed. If the color on the test strip is black, the MRC has passed. Document the MRC passed by pushing the start button. If the MRC test fails, check the expiration date on the test strip bottle and confirm the test strips have been stored properly. If not expired, use another test strip from the bottle and retest while ensuring you are following the test strip IFU. If the MRC fails again, open a new bottle of test strips and repeat the test. Test strips are sensitive to light and moisture. Be sure to replace the test strip bottle cap after each use. If the MRC continues to fail, press the Cancel button. Remove the endoscope from rotation and do not use it for a patient procedure. Call Medivator's technical support at 1-800-444-4729. The Advantage Plus reprocessor automatically stores a record of each cycle. The information recorded can include the endoscope serial number, operator, physician, and patient identification depending on initial setup options selected. The cycle record will also include if the cycle completed successfully or if it failed, MRC passed or failed, and any messages that may have displayed during the cycle. To complete the cycle, press the open-close button or to press the foot switch. To open the basin lid, scan your operator ID barcode as prompted on the screen. Remove the accessory bag. Dry contents with a clean, unused, lint-free cloth and store the parts. Store reusable parts with the corresponding endoscope as a set. Verify all connections to the endoscope are secure. If any connections are loose, the endoscope needs to be reprocessed again. Remove all connectors from the endoscope. Remove the endoscope from the basin. If using a cassette from the endo-dry storage and drying system, simply disconnect the hookup block from the basin manifold by moving the handle to the right and remove the cassette with the endoscope from the basin. Thoroughly dry all surfaces of the endoscope with a clean, unused, lint-free cloth. If you are using an endo-dry storage and drying system, please refer to the endo-dry storage and drying system user manual for further instruction. If an error was generated, 
or the MRC test failed, resulting in an endoscope not being disinfected, the endoscope must not be released for patient use. If there is any doubt as to whether an endoscope is correctly disinfected, it must be disinfected again before use. This segment demonstrates the procedures for loading new disinfectant, alcohol, and detergent in your Advantage Plus reprocessor. The system monitors the use of disinfectant, alcohol, and detergent. The percentage of fluid remaining appears in the footer of the LIO screen. Do not change part A and B until prompted. Even once the status bar turns red, there is still enough disinfectant left for approximately four cycles. When prompted, wrap aside PA part A and part B solutions should always be replaced at the same time. Wrap aside PA disinfectant has an expiration date of 21 days once opened. Replace the disinfectant when prompted by the system or if the expiration date is reached. During a cycle, the Advantage Plus reprocessor will stop with a failure screen and prompt you to replace the fluids. The cycle does not need to be canceled. After the fluids are replaced, you can resume the cycle by pressing the Start or Resume button. Even if the dialog box prompts you to change only one of the containers, it is imperative that you change both Part A and Part B at the same time. The reprocessor uses parts A and B in equal doses. The container for part A has a blue cap with a small hole designed for the chemical to breathe. It is very important that this container is stored in the upright position. The container for part B has a white cap. The caps are not only different colors and are also different sizes to aid in proper placement of the chemicals in the machine. On the side of the containers for both parts A and B, is a space to document both the open and expiration dates. Labeling the containers is necessary to ensure the use life of 21 days has not been exceeded. Don the facility required PPE for changing parts A and B, including, at minimum, a mask over the nose and mouth, face shield or eye protection, and an impervious gown and gloves. Open the center access door. Write the open and expiration dates on the new containers as well as your initials. The caps on the containers inside the Advantage Plus reprocessor are attached to long uptake tubes. Loosen the blue cap on both the uptake tube on the empty Part A container and on the new Part A container. Remove the uptake tube from the empty container and place in the new container of solution and hand tighten. Cap the used container until it can be disposed according to local, regional, or federal laws. Repeat the procedure for Part B using the white caps. A reprocessing cycle cannot be initiated or resumed if an empty disinfectant container has been detected. After replacing the disinfectant containers, the replace fluids utility must be run to clear the error condition. Press the menu button on the control panel. Scan the operator's barcode. Highlight Replace Fluids from the main menu using the selection keys. Press Check to confirm. Select Part A from the Replace Fluids menu. Press Check to confirm. Scan the barcode on the Part A container, then confirm. Repeat this process for the Part B container. The bar graph at the bottom of the screen will indicate the solution is full or at 100%. Once both containers are replaced and scanned, press the green start button and the cycle continues safely without wasting a dose of Rapicide PA disinfectant. If the fluid reservoir status indicates that the detergent or alcohol volume is low, physically refill the reservoir by following these steps. Remove the appropriate container by untwisting the container from the header. If adding alcohol, fill with 70% isopropyl alcohol to the fill line and replace container. If adding detergent, fill with intercept detergent to the fill line and replace container. If using intercept detergent one gallon container with uptake tubing, replace the empty container with a new one. Once the alcohol and or detergent containers are full, the replace fluids utility must be run before proceeding using these steps. Press the menu button. Scan the operator's barcode. Highlight Replace Fluids from the main menu using the selection keys. Press Check to confirm. Select either alcohol or detergent from the Replace Fluids menu. 
Press check to confirm. Use the mouse or touchpad to enter the alcohol lot number printed on the container. For detergent, scan the barcode on the intercept detergent container. Press the green check to confirm. The process is now complete. If applicable, press the start button to resume a cycle. A quality control for the Rapicide PA test strips must be obtained or performed prior to use. Cantel provides an online library of lot numbers tested prior to being shipped to customers. You may see this referred to as Certificate of Analysis or Certificate of Conformance. When a new bottle of Rapicide PA test strips has a different lot number, the quality control must be confirmed. To locate the Certificate of Analysis, Go to www.metavators.com. Click on Customer Support. Click on Certificates of Analysis, and a new window opens. Enter the lot number from the side of the Rapicide PA test strip bottle. Click Search. Click the PDF link that appears under the search bar to access the Certificate of Analysis. Document or print off the Certificate of Analysis that states the quality control for that lot number was performed by Metavators. There is no need to perform additional quality control testing. Prior to using the Rapicide PA test strips, match the lot number of the test strip bottle with the printed Certificate of Analysis or Conformance. Ensure that the test strips are within their reuse period of four months once opened and are properly labeled with the date open. Ensure that the test strips are properly stored by placing the cap securely on. The following maintenance tasks are required every week. Inspect the hookup locks. Inspect and lubricate the O-rings. Inspect cassettes. Routine cleaning. Restart the PC. Disinfect the water lines. While inspecting the hookup blocks, check for cracks in the hookup hoses, especially at the connections to the hookup block. If cracks have formed, the connector assembly should be replaced. Ensure all fittings are tight on the hookup block. To maintain the hookup O-rings, inspect the O-rings for damage, nicks, and cuts. If an O-ring is damaged or missing, take the hookup out of service and contact Metavator's technical support at 1-800-444-4729 to order hookup service parts. Place a small amount of O-ring oil between a glove thumb and finger and spread evenly on all hookup O-rings. To maintain the channel manifold O-rings, visually inspect the O-rings for damage, nicks, or cuts. If an O-ring is damaged or missing, obtain a replacement. Place a small amount of silicone oil between the thumb and index finger of a gloved hand and spread the silicone oil lengthwise along the connection manifold O-rings. There are eight O-rings per basin. Repeat these steps for the other basin. Inspect cassettes for cracks and damage. If damage is found, dispose of the damaged cassette and replace. For routine cleaning of all exterior surfaces of the Advantage Plus reprocessor, EPA-registered wipes can be used. Areas to be cleaned include the barcode scanner, control panels, outer lids, and exterior surfaces. In addition to scheduled maintenance on the physical unit, it is also important to maintain the health of your computer by restarting the Windows operating system on a weekly basis. Before restarting, check if there is a USB drive connected to any of the USB ports on the PC. If there is, you must eject the drive before physically disconnecting it. Disconnecting a USB drive without releasing it from use may result in an unreadable USB drive. On the ADV Utility main menu, click the Eject USB button. When prompted, you may disconnect the USB drive from the PC. Ensure cycles are not running in either basin. To restart the PC, access the ADV Utility icon on the taskbar at the bottom left corner of the screen. If the ADV Utility icon is not pinned to your taskbar, access your desktop by minimizing the LIO screen. Right-click on the ADV Utility icon and select Pin to Taskbar. Click on the PC Restart button. Once the computer restarts, all applicable programs will automatically start and the reprocessor will be ready to use at the LIO screen. 
Waterline disinfection must be performed on a weekly basis and whenever the 0.1 micron filter is replaced. Waterline disinfection can be programmed to start automatically on a weekly basis. The automatic waterline disinfection can be programmed to begin on a predetermined day and start time based on facility preference. A Cantel clinical specialist or field service engineer can assist in setting up the reprocessor with this option if desired. To prepare for waterline disinfection to start automatically, you must install the machine disinfection blocks in each basin. To install the machine disinfection blocks, open the basin lids and place the blocks into the channel manifold in both basins. Close the lids. Additionally, ensure the incoming waterline is open and the Rapicide disinfectant part A and B containers are not empty. The incoming water supply must remain open for the duration of the waterline disinfection process. At the scheduled time, the waterline disinfection will start. To manually perform a waterline disinfection, install the machine disinfection blocks in each basin. Additionally, ensure the incoming waterline is open and the Rapicide disinfectant part A and B containers are not empty. The incoming water supply must remain open for the duration of the waterline disinfection process. Press the menu button for the left side or basin. The left side of the reprocessor controls this utility. Scan your operator ID. Select programs from the main menu and confirm by pressing the green check button. Select waterline disinfect from the programs menu and confirm. When the parameter set screen opens, select S-WL disinfect two hour and confirm. An informational screen is displayed to verify that the machine disinfection blocks are installed. Select the green check to confirm the blocks are in place. The waterline disinfection cycle will start. Disinfectant is flushed through the waterline and water filtration system. The disinfectant remains in the water filter and water lines while the system is disinfected. The water lines and filter are flushed, the basin is rinsed, and the utility terminates. Once the process is complete, LIO prompts the operator to open the left basin lid. Press the left open close lid button on the control panel. Scan the operator barcode when prompted. The left lid will open. Open the right lid and remove the machine disinfection blocks from both basins. The following maintenance tasks are required every month. Replace basin drain filter and clean the reusable mesh spray arm filter. For your convenience, a filter change log to document the filter maintenance is in the in-service packet that shipped with your reprocessor. You can also download the form at www.metivators.com. The basin drain filter found in each basin should be replaced once a month. Using the provided screen hook, remove the basin screen. The basin drain screen is the round metal disc with small holes that snaps into the basin drain. Visually inspect the basin drain screen for debris. Clean under running water if debris is found. Using the same filter hook, remove the basin drain filter and discard. Install the new basin drain filter. Reinstall the basin drain screen. Repeat for the second basin and record the filter change on a log. The reusable mesh spray arm filter should be cleaned monthly. To access the spray arm filters, open the outer doors. The spray arm filters are located inside a black cap under each basin to the left of the drain manifold. Place a towel over the area below the spray arm filter as fluid will be present when the cap is removed. Untwist the cap counterclockwise. Remove and clean the reusable screen. Do not dispose. Place the clean filter back in the groove within the black cap. Ensure the red O-ring is in place in the cap. Reattach the cap. Repeat for the second side. Record the filter maintenance on a log. The following maintenance tasks are required every six months. Replace the air filters. Replace the water filters. Replace charcoal filter in the vapor management system if purchased. Your Advantage Plus reprocessor contains four 0.2 micron air filters to prevent any contaminants from reaching the channels of the endoscope during air purges and channel monitoring. Air filters should be changed every six months. To access the air filters, open both outer doors. Press down on the Quick Connect fittings to release the filter. 
remove and discard the filter. Install a new air filter by attaching the quick connect fittings, ensuring the color-coded fittings match. Repeat until all four filters are replaced. Close the outer doors. Record the filter change on a log. Individual water filters must be replaced every six months or more frequently depending on the water quality in your facility and area. Low water flow or a drop in water pressure during the flush or rinse cycles of 5 psi or more between gauges indicates a need to change the filters. Inspect each gauge, excluding the last gauge, to determine which filter to replace. The largest pressure drop is indicative of the filter that needs to be replaced. The following conditions must be met before changing a filter. No endoscope reprocessing cycles are running. No water line disinfection procedure is running. The inlet water supply is closed. You will need the following supplies. Personal protective equipment. A towel. A container to catch water. A filter wrench. Neutral pH low foaming medical grade detergent. Clean, unused, lint-free cloth. Replacement filters. High vacuum grease. Close the water supply to the system at the shutoff valve. Place a container under the air bleed valve tube located to the right of the 0.1 micron filter. Open the air bleed valve by rotating down to release the pressure and facilitate removal of the individual housings. Check the inlet pressure gauge to ensure the pressure is at zero. Place a container under the appropriate filter to catch excess water. Disconnect the quick connect fitting on the bottom of the filter housing. Slowly loosen the filter housing with the filter wrench and remove. For the 1 and 0.4 micron filters, remove the used filters by slightly twisting and pulling downward. Discard the used filters. To remove the 0.1 micron filter, rotate the used filter cartridge counterclockwise. Pull downward and discard. The filter housings can be cleaned by washing with neutral pH low foaming medical grade detergent such as intercept detergent, then rinse. Install the 1 and 0.4 micron by pushing up and slightly twisting the new filters up in the correct housing. Starting from the right side, the first filter is the 1 micron filter. The next filter is the 0.4 micron. The last filter on the left is the 0.1 micron filter. To install a new 0.1 micron filter, insert it into the housing header. Rotate the filter clockwise until the two tabs on the filter lock onto the screw shanks that hang down from the filter header. Pull down slightly to verify the filter is locked in place. Before reattaching the housing, ensure the O-ring is in place. If needed, place a small amount of high vacuum grease on the O-ring and housing threads to aid in assembly and sealing. Reattach the housing and hand tighten. Do not over tighten and do not use a filter wrench to tighten. Reconnect the quick connect fitting at the bottom of the filter housing. Rotate the bleed valve up to the closed position. Turn on the water supply and check for leaks. Now that the new filters are installed, air trapped in the water lines should be removed. To remove the air, run the water sample utility following these steps. Press the menu button. Scan the user's badge. Select program. Select utility program. Choose take water sample. Once water is flowing in the basin, place a container under the bleed valve outlet tube and slowly open the bleed valve. Let the water run from the bleed valve outlet tube until it is a steady stream. Close the filter bleed valve. Push cancel to stop the water sample utility. Confirm cancellation by pushing the green check mark. No actual water sample is needed. Water line disinfection must be performed on a weekly basis and whenever the 0.1 micron filter is replaced. See the water line disinfection section in the weekly maintenance segment for instructions. Record the filter change and water line disinfection on a log. If purchased, the active vapor management system is located on the back of the Advantage Plus reprocessor. The active vapor management system 
is designed to minimize exposure to chemical fumes by pulling the fumes away from the user. Inside the vapor management system is a charcoal filter that neutralizes or removes chemical vapors drawn through this filter by a fan and puts fresh air back out into the room. This filter should be changed every six months. To change the vapor management filter, first turn off the fan switch on the vapor management system. Turn the thumb screws on the hinge door on the left side of the system to release and open the door. Remove and discard the old charcoal filter. Install a new charcoal filter, verifying the direction of the arrow on the filter label is pointing to the back of the vapor management system. Close the hinge door and turn the screw clockwise to tighten. Turn on the system's power switch. Record the filter change on a log. Preventative maintenance, or PM, should be completed annually. Proper maintenance ensures effective disinfection and prolongs the life of your reprocessor. Contact Metavator's technical support at 1-800-444-4729 to schedule the PM. When required to shut down the PC, it is important to shut it down properly. If the PC is not shut down properly, damage can occur to the computer's operating system and hard drives. When powering down the PC, it is important to perform the process using the ADV utility. Avoid using the PC power switch or the Advantage Plus Reprocessor's main switch as this may damage the PC. Before powering down the PC, check if there is a USB drive connected to the PC. If there is, eject the drive before physically disconnecting it. On the ADV Utility main menu, click on the Eject USB button. You may then disconnect the USB drive from the PC. Disconnecting a USB drive without releasing it from use may result in an unreadable USB drive. To shut down the PC, click on the ADV Utility button on the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. Click on the PC Shutdown button. The PC is successfully powered down when the monitor goes black and the blue button below the monitor is no longer illuminated. To power the PC back up, depress the same PC power button under the monitor. If you are asked to shut down the power to the entire Advantage Plus reprocessor, you first need to shut down the PC as just described. On the back of the unit, there is a black toggle or rocker switch to power the reprocessor on and off. If the reprocessor remains powered down for over seven days, please contact Metavator's technical support at 1-800-444-4729 for appropriate startup procedures. The Advantage Plus reprocessor can report and display different types of errors that signal and identify specific areas requiring attention. Please refer to the user manual for a list of specific error codes and their descriptions. Operator messages and errors appear in the Reports field in the lower section of the screen. An audible alarm also sounds to communicate certain information. The text shows the time at which the message occurred, the message code, and a description of the message or instructions for the operator to follow. The most recent message is at the top of the field. The background color indicates the type of error or message presented. The lower section of the screen displays a screen color that indicates the program status. Gray indicates the program is in standby. Orange indicates the program is in standby, with a lid open or warning present. Blue indicates the cycle is in process. Red indicates there is an error or the cycle failed. The endoscope is not disinfected. Green indicates the cycle completed successfully and the endoscope is disinfected. If the error occurs during a disinfection cycle, the cycle will stop. Press Start to see if the cycle continues without error. If unable to restart the cycle, press Cancel and Acknowledge by pressing the green check or OK. A recovery program runs until a safe state is reached and the endoscope can be removed. If errors continue to occur, call Metavator's technical support at 1-800-444-4729. Thank you for viewing this video. Please complete the assessment that accompanies this video and print the completion certificate prior to your hands-on in-service.